Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Tom again. This is part two of the cellular automata series. In the last lesson, what we did was we created a window and we drew a triangle to it. So nothing amazing. We just have this right triangle here. If you don't have the right triangle, please change it back to these coordinates that I have uh, because we're going to turn this into a square in a minute and we don't want the distorted one that we were working with in the last lesson. Now, to get this window, we inherited from this window class. And if you haven't gone and looked at the documentation online, I highly recommend you go out and take a look because there's a lot of things that this class and a lot of things actually that are documented here that I'm not going to cover that you might be interested in. So the window classes, it's a big one and there's a lot of different things you can do. So for example, these are all the events. Uh, now, if you don't know what an event is, an event is actually part of an application that's it's really just waiting there in order to be activated by something that you do. So there's this thing called an event loop. Also a game loop is kind of the same idea. And it's uh, it's sitting there in the background waiting for you to do things like on draw, which is something that we're doing is drawing to the window or pressing a key or the mouse or something like that. So every application that's a windowed application uh, has an event loop and the event loop in all games and everything do as well. When you press a key, press the mouse button, it's activating these events as it goes through. The other thing our class has is a bunch of methods and these are things that we can call to help us you know, clean up the window like this is clear or you could even close the window if you want. So maybe you don't want the user to click the X at the top right of the window, but you want the user instead to do something like, um, I don't know, click a button inside the actual application and it will close the window. So you could do that. Uh, there's a lot of other things in here. We've used another one down here, uh, set size to resize our window to 600 by 600. Okay, so take a look at all this stuff, uh, play with it a bunch. Uh, I think that just messing around with things and breaking it and fixing it are probably the best ways to learn. You could listen to me talk, but really you just end up kind of following me and not really exploring on your own. All right, so let's go back to, I guess, following me here in this next part. Uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to turn this into a square. So we're using this draw index method. And if you remember, it takes four parameters. The first one is how many points we have what we're using these vertices for to draw, then the indices which match these coordinates. Now, in order to get a square, I really just need to add one more point off to the top right. Now, I could, if I wanted to, I could just draw a whole nother triangle there, but that's actually wasting clock cycles, wasting the graphics card or the CPU's time, whatever you're rendering with, because I'm sending in six vertices instead of the four that I actually need. And since your graphics card, everything really renders triangles, you want to try to create everything as triangles instead of GL quads or something like that. Because really in the background, a GL, uh, a GL quad or some other like square or whatever you're trying to do, it's really being broken down to triangles by your graphics card. Uh, now, this here is probably more complicated, this draw index method than what you're used to seeing in other graphics libraries that are different than Direct3D or OpenGL. And you probably just have a method called draw triangle, which just draws a triangle to the screen because you just give it three points and you're done. Uh, this gives you a little bit more flexibility and it lets you kind of, it lets you change the way that you're sending the vertices to the graphics card. I could use a vertex list and compile everything I'm about to do into one list and then send it to the graphics card to be drawn. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to keep using this simple function for now. Uh, later on, when we're, when we're trying to shove more, uh, more polygons through, we're going to switch it up a bit and we'll use vertex list and other different things to draw. All right. Uh, so let's go ahead and change this into a square. The first thing I want to tell it is that I am going to use four points instead of three. Now, these three indexes here, they represent the first triangle that I want to draw. Now, I want another triangle, but it needs one more point. And that point is at 350, 350, which is the top right of the triangle. So if this represents the first triangle, I need the top left of the the triangle I need the bottom 
right of the triangle and I need my new point which is the top right. Okay, so now I have four points and this, is, this represents one triangle, this represents two triangles, uh, the second triangle rather, and then I have the four points and notice how I have one, two, twice in here because the index list is reusing my points. So it's a smart way to do things because I'm reusing points and I'm saving, saving time, saving energy. All right, so let's go ahead and run this and we're gonna get a nice square in the middle. And I'm doing this in here just because it's easier to see this uh, after, right after you've used this the first time and it's in a simple little environment here to draw this square. Uh, we're gonna be modifying this a bit when we actually create the game of life because we're gonna make adjustable size squares and we're gonna be drawing them in different places. So obviously we're gonna want to change these coordinates. Okay, uh, so let's go ahead and close this and let's create a new class for our game of life. So I'm gonna create a new window and I'm gonna save this and I'm gonna call it gameoflife.py and I'm gonna pop it over to a new window over here uh, so I can see both these things at the same time. Okay, so let's go ahead and create the class. This is called game of life and I'm going to create my constructor. Now the constructor is gonna take in a few parameters so this is my window width and this is my window height and this is going to be my cell size and these are going to be the first three parameters that we're going to be using later on I'm going to add some more in because we're going to want to give some different options that this thing can do uh, but for now everything else I'm going to hard code and then later we'll come back and adjust those parameters all right, now I'm gonna create uh, a grid width. Now the grid width is actually the window width divided by the cell size. So right now our window size is 600. I can't make those equal because that means the grid that we're drawing is 600 wide, which means each individual cellular automata would be one pixel wide. And we actually want it to be like 20 pixels wide or something. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say window width divided by cell size. And I'm making this an integer because if I didn't make it an integer, it'll complain later when I try to use these for my loops. Uh, so grid height is equal to int and window height is equal to cell size. Now, if I, if I wanted all of my all of my cellular automata to just be uh, on a square grid. I could just make one variable, but I want to make kind of adjustable stuff. I want to be able to play around with elongated grids and see how life evolves in those simpler situations. Okay, and then cell size is going to be equal to cell size. All right, so right now everything is good. Uh, we just have our variables. Uh, we do need now a place to store our cells. And the way we're going to store information is on the grid, which is actually uh, going to be a list of lists. So if you're unfamiliar, why didn't, why didn't I do this? You might be wondering why I didn't do that. If you're not familiar with Python, in Python, everything is made of a list. There's really no, there's not native support for arrays. There are libraries that take care of arrays for you. Uh, but you, we're going to make a list of lists. And if you're not familiar with lists, if you've never used them in other uh, in other languages, so they work a bit different than arrays. Uh, so what we're going to do on our grid is the grid is just going to be zeros and ones. So anything that's a zero is dead, anything that's one is alive. So very easily, uh, we're just going to pick some random, random starting stuff. Uh, we're going to maybe make 30% of the grid equal to one, and then the rest is going to be dead, and then we're going to run it from there. Uh, so the next thing I want to do is I actually want to generate my cells and to generate the cells I'm just going to loop through two times. So I'm going to say for row in um, the range of zero up to self.grid height and for the column in range zero up to uh, self.grid width 
Hey, and I have to do something in here. Every time I, I go through this, I need to do self.cells.append, and I need to put in an array here, I mean a list. So really, I, what I'm doing is I have a completely empty list at the start, and every time I go in for a new row, I add a new list onto that, and now I'm gonna fill that list with actual information. All right, so let's go ahead and fill it up. We need to, in here, check if we're gonna fill it or not gonna fill it. So I need to do something like if, and then I need to say a random number. So if random dot random, and then do something like that. And so let me import my random library. So I import random as rand. Okay, and if you're not familiar with this, what this is is this random method returns a value between zero and one. So if that value is say less than 0 0.4, that means what I wanna do is I want to make the value that's gonna be in my, my grid equal to one. So I would say self.cells and self.cells that's going to be self that cells row dot pend. And so in this row, I'm going to append a one. And else if it would be self dot cells row dot append zero. So this 0 0.4 is a hard coded value, and we're going to ch put a parameter up here for this later. Uh, but for right now, we're just going to leave that as it is. And uh, so it should work just fine, but we're going to later change this so it's variable so we can test if 10% is full, do we keep living, or if 100% is full, what happens then? Things like that. So uh, let's go ahead and initialize this class. Right now, nothing's going to happen. If I, if I run this, nothing's going to happen. I just get this, this square on the screen. So I'm going to import this over here. So I'm going to import... Um, I'm actually going to say from game of life, uh, import game of life. And then I'm going to go ahead and initialize it inside here. So I'm going to say this is self uh, game of life is game of life. Game of life is equal to uh, game of life and give it my parameters. Okay, so the first two parameters, I could do 600, 600, and then maybe 20 for the cell size. So my grid will be 20 pixels by 20 pixels for each square. But this right here is not the best way to do it because that means later, if I wanna change the size of my window, I've gotta change it in two places. And changing something in two places is in good practice. And since I am lazy, I am going to instead use this method only once so when I change my window size later, I don't have to change it in two places. Okay, so I'm gonna say self dot get size and one. So what am I doing here? Well, this get size method will return a tuple which has the width for the first one and the height for the second one. So width is my first, just the zero element of the tuple and one is my height. All right, so just pretty simple. If you're not quite sure what it does, go take a look at that documentation I just showed you, and it should be pretty evident. Okay, so right now, still nothing's happening, obviously, because we're not drawing anything over here, but it looks like everything works just fine. Uh, we do need to actually generate our cells when we create the object, so we just do that. And we're gonna create one more method in here and I'm gonna create a draw method. And this draw method, I'm gonna take this that we've created so far, and I'm gonna paste it inside of here. Yeah, let's. And to get this to run, I do need to import the library. And so now, if I wanna do that, I can do self.gameoflife.draw. Okay, so what I did was I created this new method and I just copied over our, our square over into here. And then I'm after I initialized or created the object game of life, I now down here I'm calling it uh, the draw method for that game of life. So if I run this, 
Oh, I got an error in here. Let's see. Oh, I'm sorry. I need to put a self in front of this. Self.generate cells. And there we go. We got our square in the middle of the screen. And everything works just fine. All right, so this is the start of the Game of Life class. In the next lesson, we're going to draw the grid as it is. And then we're going to talk about the rules that go behind the Game of Life and how we might start coding those. Okay? All right, so it's been fun, and I will see you next lesson.